Now, again, these types of plots also can tell you, based on visualization, types of inhibitors that are present. So instead of two substrates together and how they are interacting, we can look at how a substrate and an inhibitor act together. To define an inhibitor, they are any compound that just decreases an enzyme's activity. Um, again, they're different from substrates in that sense because they are going to decrease the activity. That's the word inhibition. They're stopping the enzyme from doing its normal activity or slowing it down. There are different types of inhibitors that we'll be talking about. Um, and one of the types of descriptions we can give inhibitors is based on how they bind to an enzyme. Firstly, there can be irreversible inhibitors. So these are any compound that will react with an enzyme and then essentially permanently shut it off. It will not detach. It is bound in there and the enzyme is then permanently inactivated um, and unable to unbind. These are often really powerful toxins, as you would imagine. If you have something that gets into your body and it shuts down an enzyme completely, no, no reversibility, that's pretty bad. <laughs> That enzyme is out of action. And if that keeps happening, you're going to have a big problem. Can they be used as drugs? Yes, they can. Usually we don't want drugs that are this powerful. Um, you want some reversibility. Now there's also reversible inhibitors, which can bind to a enzyme, but also unbind or dissociate from an enzyme. Usually, if you have some reversibility, um, the compound is a structural analog or it looks like the normal substrate or one of the products. So normally, if you can kind of bind and come in and out as an inhibitor, you have to look like one of the things that is normally binding to that enzyme. These are usually used as drugs. Um, reversibility is good because we don't want something to usually completely shut down an enzyme. Um, we want to be able to have some normal reactivity, but maybe just slow down an enzyme's ability to work. If you have a reversible enzyme, it can bind in different ways. And we're going to be talking about that next. So within the class of reversible inhibitors, you can have ones that um, bind to different parts of the enzyme. So again, we have irreversible inhibitors, we have reversible inhibitors. And then within the realm of reversible inhibitors, we have different ways that an enzyme can be a reversible inhibitor. One of those ways is competitive inhibition. This is any type of inhibitor that is competing for the same site that the normal substrate binds to. It binds the normal active site and it is going to affect catalysis only if bound. So here you can see that for a competitive inhibition, you have your enzyme that could bind your substrate. And just like normal, it could form this complex, which then makes product. Now, if that enzyme, before it ever binds its substrates, instead, reacts with an inhibitor, you'll form this complex, which is the um, enzyme with inhibitor. How do competitive inhibitors change an enzyme's kinetics? Competitive inhibitors will not change the Vmax of an enzyme. Um, so if you're just looking at how an enzyme normally catalyzes a substrate, it will still be able to catalyze a substrate at the same maximum point. So Vmax is not changed. 
but the apparent affinity for its substrate um, will increase, meaning that it's having less affinity when you have a competitive inhibitor. Now, again, this is easy to visualize on a line weaver Burke plot. This is what you would look, what you would see if you had a competitive inhibitor. So I'm going to note some main things. As we increase the amount of inhibitor here, so each line represents um, a concentration of inhibitor where we have just kept it the same for that whole line, and then each line is a different concentration. So for example, this line is where we have inhibitor of one molar, let's say, and then this is two molar and this is three molar. So we're increasing inhibitor. What you'll see again for something that is a competitive inhibitor, the point at which all of the lines intersect, which is where your Vmax is, will be on the y axis. So for a competitive inhibitor, you have this intersection at Vmax, intersection of all of the lines for each concentration of inhibitor at the Vmax. Now, if you wanted to calculate this relationship between the inhibitor and the um, normal, uh, normal, equation of a line, which is what we call alpha, you could get that information by, again, plotting these different inhibition concentrations and then calculating your Km for a competitive in inhibitor. So again, competitive inhibitors will only change the Km. They won't change the Vmax, which is why the Vmax is the same. That's why they all intersect at the Vmax, but the Km for each inhibitor concentration is different. Another type of reversible inhibition you can have is called an uncompetitive inhibitor. This is an inhibitor that does not bind to the same point as um, the normal substrate. Uh, it does bind to the complex, so the substrate has to be there, right? So we've formed our enzyme and substrate, uh, but then the inhibitor can bind to that, that complex and inhibit or slow down the rate of the formation of product. So instead you get this enzyme substrate inhibitor all bound together like this instead of your product. So again, inhibitor will bind to another spot on the enzyme. This does decrease the Vmax. For an uncompetitive inhibitor, you get a decrease in Vmax and you get a decrease in Km. Now, the slope of the line or the relationship between these, because you're decreasing both, doesn't change. So what you'll see is parallel lines. This is similar to what we saw with the two substrates that are a ping pong type. In this case, remember, we're looking at inhibitor. And as we increase the concentration of inhibition, these lines are going up. Notice again, they're all parallel. They do not intersect with each other. So they all have uh, their own Vmax. Vmax is changing, right? That's this intersection point along the y-axis. And they all have their own Km, which again is also changing. Now the last type of inhibition we're going to go over is called a mixed type of inhibition. This means that the inhibitor can bind to the enzyme with or without a substrate. So unlike the non-competitive, it doesn't have to have the substrate there. But like the non-competitive, 
it also binds to its own spot. So it is not competing for the same spot that the substrate has. It's again binding to its own position on an enzyme, but it can bind there whether or not the substrate is present. So that means that we can take enzyme all by itself and bind inhibitor, or we can have enzyme already bound to substrate and bind inhibitor. This is what it looks like visually. So again, here's your enzyme all by itself. Our inhibitor can bind on just to the enzyme and that will help inhibit the enzyme. Or your enzyme could have already made a complex with the substrate and then the inhibitor can bind on making this. So again, it is not competitive. It's not going for the same spot as the substrate, but it doesn't matter if the substrate is there or not to cause inhibition. What this will do is decrease the Vmax and also change your Km. However, it is going to have an apparent change in Km, which does not lead to identical slopes or parallel Km to Vmax. So for this type of inhibition, a mixed inhibition, you do still have um, Vmaxes that are differing, but at some point these lines will intersect. So remember our Vmax is determined based on where the line intersects the y-axis. So notice all the Vmaxes are different. However, instead of um, having this change in Vmax in which you are, as you increase the inhibition, you in, excuse me, you are going to decrease the Vmax as concentration of inhibitor increases, Vmax goes down and Km goes down in a non-competitive inhibition. So again, that's what this looks like. Sorry, this is the going down and going down in each case. For a mixed inhibition, you can see that Vmax goes down, but Km actually increases. And Visually, what that looks like is instead you have your lines intersect at a point that is in the area of negative x region. So it, it does not intersect right on the y axis and instead intersects in this point to the left in the negative x region. And you can see that your um, KMs are instead of increase instead of decreasing increasing. Main thing again to look for is where this intersection happens. I think visually the easiest way to determine these is looking where the intersection of points occurs. If it is to the left in this negative x region, it is a mixed inhibitor. If they are parallel, if there is no intersection, it is uncompetitive inhibition. And if there is an intersection, but it happens at the y-axis, competitive inhibition. So again, this is all about that Vmax and Km and how they are related to the type of inhibitor, how the inhibitor is changing how the enzyme acts. Okay, that's it for enzyme kinetics. Please go through, I posted a lot of videos um, kind of detailing more about understanding these plots, where this information is coming from. Go through that because we're really gonna be dissecting um, how to get information from the plots or also how to graph information um, into one of these Michaelis-Menten or Lineweaver-Burke plots.